what a banger. Yes, yes, so hairless here. Today we have Pentatonix, the evolution of Michael Jackson. This was the winner of the most recent members Pentatonix poll. You can vote on polls by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships linked in the description. I've done one other evolution of Pentatonix video before and that was the evolution of music. Most of the musical intricacies in that one came in the transitions between songs and these transitions were really interesting. With each transition, Pentatonix needed to consider a number of things such as voicing, who is singing which part in the next song, modulations, to handle key changes, rhythmic changes, stylistic changes, are we singing open vowels or words or percussive da 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 type things? There are a lot of decisions to be made by them, so I will be listening out for these things. Michael Jackson, the king of pop, I love his music, I grew up with a lot of it, especially the Jackson 5. I think I prefer his older stuff, maybe I don't know too much of his newer stuff, I guess we'll find out. An evolution of video, I believe this is a one take recording. I think that's always nice to see, it might be a little bit more rough and ready around the edges compared to a studio version but it's a good thing it shows they're human and more importantly it shows how good they are to be able to do something like this in one take I've noticed this is a little bit longer than their other videos that they've done in one take the other ones I've done they tend to keep under three minutes this one is five minutes on that note I did receive a fair few comments saying that they did this evolution of Michael Jackson performance as part of their pop spring 2016 concert I've not listened to any of that yet so for this one I've decided to go for the video I plan on doing pop spring in the future at some point I don't don't know in what format yet so by going for this one now it leaves some avenues open all right here we go oh baby give me one more chance come on girl when i had you to myself and i didn't want you around but that pretty face is always made you stand out i want you back Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me? I want you back. Oh, my ABC. Bye. It's as easy as one, two, three. Bye. It's as simple as do, baby. ABC. One, two, three. Baby, you and me, girl. Out, shake your body down to the ground. To the boys, don't stop. Don't stop till you get enough. To the boys, don't stop. Don't stop till you. I wanna rock with you all night. Then to the sunlight. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me go? You got a fun girl. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me go? You got a fun girl. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me go? You got a fun girl. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me go? You got a fun girl. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me go? You got a fun girl. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me go? You got a fun girl. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me go? You got a fun girl. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't you please let me go? You got a fun girl. Oh, baby, give me one more chance to show you that I love you. Won't they come in mid-phrase, it's just not what we're expecting to see. What song starts mid-phrase like that? A surprising opening is always a good thing, I think. It grabs our attention. And then they went straight into these two chords. Let's go over to the online keyboard to have a look at this. It's this second chord here. Notice this diminished chord which basically means a scrunch chord of sorts, which then resolves with a nicer chord before we get into... I Want You Back. What a banger. This is everyone's first a cappella song. It's designed in such a way that every part is heard distinctly. They come in one by one. It's quite simple overall, but it sounds complex because of these rhythms that we get, the repeated notes, for example, which Pentatonix are choosing to double down on. <laughs> 
interesting that they're choosing to double down on this, but it is what adds in this rhythmic kind of feel to it. And that comes in Scott and Mitch, they're singing in octaves with each other. And they're also swaying perfectly together. It's so easy to be a little bit out of tune when you sing like that in octaves with someone, especially a repeated note. So yes, special shout out to them, especially Mitch's tuning for keeping things elevated. Quick personal digression, this song has a massive place in my heart. It really helped me out with understanding how you can get loads of different musical elements and put them together to create this larger thing. When I was about 12, 13 years old, I did an arrangement of this for multiple voices. It was my first real go at doing something like that, you know, didn't really know what I was doing. So if you're interested at the very, very end of this video, I'll include a few short clips of that. I'm sure I have them on my computer somewhere. Yeah, I'm happy they spend quite a lot of time on I Want You Back. It's just a great bit of music. So good to sing a cappella. We get all these rhythmic contrasts between like the da da das and I Want You Back and then the chordal sections. <laughs> before a unison, I want you back. They're getting as much contrast as they can fit into this short amount of time. And then at the end we get this, which I'm really happy Mitch does. <laughs> This Who's Loving You reference, albeit quite short, is completely essential in a Michael Jackson medley. It's a shame they didn't get more of the song in, I really like that song, but here, being able to include that, it serves an important purpose as well, which is transitioning us into ABC. Whilst we're on Who's Loving You, by the way, another personal digression, this is time for me to embarrass myself again. This also reminds me of many years ago when I was a teenager, a little bit older this time. There was this app that we all used to use and it just released filters, like they turn you into a dog or a cat or something in real time, I thought it was groundbreaking technology. It would also make your voice sound a little bit funny, a bit cartoony. And around that time, I was obsessed with Who's Loving You and I would just be singing it on repeat. I remember filming a little clip of it, so I'll show you that now. I was so embarrassed after what I just done that I put some little emoji of me to cover it. But yeah, here it is. And you'll notice that I did used to have hair as well. Alright, enough personal Sir Hellas talk, let's get back to Pentatonix. ABC, another song that at its core is perfect for a cappella. It has nice harmonic homophonic movement, so singing the same words as each other at the same time in the same rhythms. And the bass joins in, but the bass doesn't have any words. So we kind of get the best of both worlds, let's have a listen. <laughs> And Kevin's beat at this moment is stressing two notes per phrase, or two beats per phrase, but it's really exaggerating two notes per phrase for the others who are singing. So then the next song is I'll Be There. You and I must make a pair. They choose nice voicing here, giving Scott the melody. You know, it's lower than normal, but it allows for the higher voices, Kirsty and Mitch, to provide these angelic oohs in the background up there. And if we listen, it's actually Mitch's note that doesn't change at all. Everyone else does, but Mitch is just singing this. You and I must make a pair. That's also the highest note Scott sings in that phrase. At the highest part, he joins Mitch and they're singing together. I think there's just something quite nice about it. And then just like Who's Loving You with the song Ben, they choose to just do a very short inclusion of it. You got a I just really love Bender's song. Oh, it's, it's nice. Not a place to go. But they can't include every song, so they have to shorten some. Choosing which songs to include more of or less of, I'm sure, is one of the hardest decisions when it comes to arranging an evolution of medley. But the songs that they do only include a few seconds of do serve a purpose. Again, Ben here is serving a purpose of transitioning into the next song. Now we're entering the more kind of upbeat disco-y territory. We notice how it's all about the rhythms here, the syncopations. And shout, shout. Shake your body down to the ground. We have shake your body down to the ground and then that goes into don't stop till you get enough. It's remarkable how similar these two songs are. Let's listen to a clip of shake your body and then pentatonic singing don't stop. It's like they were made to be next to each other in an evolution of medley. And then we go into Rock With You, where they've given Scott the melody again. Definitely a tactical choice. I wanna rock. 
Mitch and Kirsty have the higher voices. You'd think it might seem natural to just alternate between those two as you go through the Michael Jackson repertoire. In this case though, the melody is the perfect range for Scott, I think, because we'll see how he starts in his head voice and then he moves down to his chest voice with a very, very clear break in the middle. And it creates that effect we hear. <laughs> It's like the separation of phrases. All right, this is cool so far. Let's carry on. I believe we just got to Billie Jean. some juicy things there didn't we some nice nice things there dirty diana will have to wait all right let's go over those last couple of minutes avi is the mvp for billy jean you know it's this rapid bass line not only do you have to be in tune but you have to keep up rhythmically and usually you'd be inclined to then speed up avi naturally has to breathe unlike mitch in the carol of the bells but notice how avi has to choose which note to breathe on <laughs> See, just at the top and the <gasps> effect almost sounds like another note in itself. Anyway, so we start this bit with Avi and Kevin. See how Kevin's beat for, for that phrase there is melodic in itself. He's actually producing notes. He then drops out. We get some crazy smooth kind of voice clicking that he's doing before everyone else then comes in. <laughs> Scott as well using his high register to blend with Mitch there. Yeah, it's just an iconic song. Speaking of Scott and Mitch, a few seconds later, I found their harmony choice here quite unconventional. It's a bit odd, but I do realize why they've done it this way. It's to contrast and set us up for what comes next, which is the layered major chord outline before this really cool kid is not my. Ascending, descending. <laughs> We go back to homophony, the beat stops, everyone stops. Avi slides down. It's a really nice effect that is just very different to the dum -dum 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 kind of bass line that we're hearing. And then they go straight into another very iconic song, Beat It. They've made Beat It stand out more than it would otherwise because of the backing vocal parts. This is Kirsty, Mitch and Avi, and they're all moving in parallel motion up and down together. It creates this kind of quite bare bones effect overall, whilst making sure that it sounds full harmonically. There are at least three separate notes being heard, so the chords feel more full. Next transition we get, Avi and Kevin are the MVPs here, again. That's this kind of tape rewind slowing down effect. I think it's a literal representation of the music slowing down for... Looking out, yeah, across the 
the next slower song. And just like we heard earlier, the beat again stops to emphasize the harmony. It's a really powerful and simple thing to do. It just works really well. Do I, why? Those whys are really nice, really, really in tune. And then it changes into a thriller. And that's interesting as well, harmonically. On the word thriller. If I just play that bit again. And once more. That sounds like the ending of something. Avi goes like this. If you switch the order around. And harmonically, we can think of that as... This is called a perfect cadence, and what it basically means is that whatever chord you finish in, which is number one, you move from five notes above it. So we finish here from five notes above it, which is here. It's like the most standard way to end a piece of music, traditionally speaking. But then they come off the word thriller on that bit, and then suddenly we're in a completely new key. <laughs> And then we get this bit, which is pretty jazzy. And before I play it, we just want to think of what exactly they're doing. We get one note in the bass versus then two notes in the other singers. So rhythmically, now we're thinking in threes instead of the usual twos. Normally it's one, two, one, two, which exaggerates this climactic rise up to finish on a juicy chord. That chord, what we're hearing, And if we move all these notes close together, it looks like this. It is a black note scrunch chord heaven. It's harmonically ambiguous. We don't really know what's gonna happen. And then what follows is harmonically ambiguous. It's harmonically obvious, very obvious. We know what key we're in. I just can't stop loving you. <laughs> and then Mitch here, he sounds like MJ. So cool. I want to love you. And when they say TLC, how tight they are as well. Right, then there were a few more songs before we carry on. So we had Bad next. There's not too much to say about Bad. Avi's part is the part that really stands out to me. He has this descending interval. But then we get this, well, it's a surprise, isn't it? Not just Kevin singing a solo, but in his falsetto. He has such a smooth voice. He uses a fair bit of air as well to help with that. And then, of course, <laughs> go on, Kevin. After that, we get Mitch again sounding like MJ himself with Man in the Mirror. It would also fit perfectly into this video up here. Shameless plug to my reaction of Home Freeze, mashup of Thinking Out Loud, and let's get it on. It's that same famous bass line, the same chord progression. Try it, listen to Let's Get It On or Thinking Out Loud and then sing Man in the Mirror. They'll work perfectly together. It could be a good tip for when you go to karaoke, do a little surprise in there. Speaking of Let's Get It On, Scott and Kersey now are doing the same rhythmic harmonies that Pentatonix did in their version of Let's Get It On from the sing-off. Here it's just a bit sped up. It's the same rhythm as the bass line. My reaction to that is up here if you're interested. In Let's Get It On, it's a completely different effect. That's why beats per minute, the speed is so, so important. All right, let's carry on. I believe Avi was telling us about Dirty Diana. If you wanna make a world a better place, take a look at yourself and then... Dirty Diana, whoa, Dirty Diana, whoa. Place in your heart, and I know that it is love in this 
place Could be much brighter than tomorrow You are yeah. ways to get there If you care enough for everything Make a little space Make a better place You're Like the river joy Hey, I wouldn't say to this Oh, that was a nice way to end, wasn't it? I liked that. Notice how they ended with the perfect cadence we spoke about earlier. Five to one. Yeah, I mean, these evolution of videos, even though it's the second one I've seen, medleys in general, to be honest. I've seen a couple of Pentatonix's medleys from the sing-off. They're great arrangements. The ideas that must come to your head to be able to get these songs together in such a fluid and natural sounding way. Let's go over those last few songs that we heard then. So, starting with Dirty Diana. Avi, just loving life, grooving along to that. Oh, 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 And I love how they put Annie as part of Diana. Die, Annie, are you okay? They just had to do that. It would have been a crime to have not done that. I am surprised by how they choose to treat Smooth Criminal, my least favourite in terms of what they do with the original song. They've chosen not to include the melody. On Annie, are you okay? Annie, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And this is also the part that has the only real noticeable miss sung note. Are you okay? But I really like this bit coming up where they go, but but. Are you okay? You be here back. You be here back. And then Mitch going up on that bup. Then we get black and white. Overall, much more of a simple one. There's nothing ambiguous about it. It's just quite feel good. I It's got this homophonic feeling, this idea of unity, family, friends, togetherness. Musically, that bit sounds like it could have come straight off the sing-off. And then we get this falling chord transition here. Time. They're keeping things simple, they're not going as complex as they could. There are four people singing, so not including Kevin. Avi and Mitch are singing in octaves, so they're singing the same notes. This means we hear three notes instead of four. With four different notes, then the chords are going to have to become much more juicy sounding. That's not what you want in this musical context. Then we get Heal the World, very calm. Again, Scott has the melody, just like before, he can switch between his chest voice and his head voice quite distinctly. Ways to get there. And then we have a classic rising key change, just sliding up by a semitone or a half step into Mitch. <laughs> And finally, to finish up, we go from this really soulful passage of music. It's quite bouncy, gradually rising. We get a hemiola in there. So instead of thinking one, two, one, two, we're going one, two, three, one, two, three. On the words, will you be there? To finish with this lovely homophonic chordal, very tuneful, very nice chords as well. Ways to get there if you care enough uh, section to finish. Well, there we are. Pentatonic's Evolution of the King of Pop, Michael Jackson. I love the fact it's one take. What you see is what you get. The most interesting thing to me about these medleys or evolution of videos is the arrangement itself. Way, way, way more challenging, I think, than people might think. And, you know, if you love Michael Jackson's music, you're sure to love this one. I can see why it won the poll. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. Would appreciate a like and subscribe. If you'd like to join the community and support me, Patreon and YouTube memberships are linked in the description below, and I will see you next time.